Hey there and welcome to another episode of the 3C Show. It's Johnny here and today we're talking about a Milky Way photography. This image has been sent in by the lovely Kay from the Team 3CX community and uh, yeah, I just... Uh, going to give her a hand to give it an edit. She wanted some tips on the best way to edit. You can see they are, you know, very high ISOs to get these type of images. And in fact, I think this was shot at 12,800. So you can see it's, it's huge, you know, like really, really um, noisy, but this is the only way you can capture the Milky Way, you know? So um, yeah, a couple of tips I can see here with Kay. So you can see you're starting to get a little bit of movement, you know, it moves a bit slower towards the center of the Milky Way. But as you come out, you can see the stars are starting to move a little bit. And that's because of the, the 30 second, um, if we can see here, I think the shutter was 30 seconds. Um, yeah, so, you know, any sort of from 20, 25 seconds onwards, you're sort of starting to to really push the, uh, the, the movement and the stars because they are moving quite quick. So even with that amount of exposure, you'll see the stars are starting to move in the sky. So yeah, you want to think about, you know, trying to either find a place, sorry, trying to either find a sweet spot where the stars don't move. But if you're happy with that little bit of movement, that's fine. I mean, obviously when you start to shoot star trails, that's when you see the wicked circles. Um, you're after a little bit of movement like this and you blend all your images together and you get those amazing star circles that you would have seen before. Now this shot, I love the composition. I love the detail here. I, um, beautifully silhouetted. I really like that. Now you, you often have two options for your foreground like this. Um, you, can, you can shoot this and while it's like you know while you've got your shutter open your exposure going you can paint a bit of light in around here to give more detail or you can do what Kay's done here and just had something super interesting silhouetted um, I like the fact you've got this here in, in your foreground that's super interesting and then you've got the Milky Way coming across like this and uh, that takes a bit of planning you know when you're when you're planning where you're going to shoot your Milky Way from you need to plan which direction the uh, the actual Milky Way will be facing compared to your subject and the one tool I love to use to do that is called Photo Pills. Um, they've got some great tutorials on their website about how to use it. It's a great app. Absolutely love it. All right, so let's get into processing. First, we're going to look at exposure. So histogram and then we're going to look at color and then um, sharpening and noise and maybe some local adjustments and something in that order. But um, what you want to do, you want to try and find a, a nice natural you know a color you know and it, with sorry let's start with exposure i should say i said exposure didn't i and i jumped back to color because obviously uh being a landscape photographer color makes me excited <laughs> anyway so let's start with exposure so obviously it is going to be pushed up um, we are going to have some black silhouetted areas down here and that's all fine. I mean, we don't want to open the shadows. You can see what's happening. There's not, you know, there's not a lot of detail down in here. We're not going to be able to do much with this at all. So don't stress. It's okay for that to be black, okay? And obviously we're going to get into the noise a bit later as well. But um, so let's just have a look here. So one thing that's really important with this type of photography and you can make your sky really blue. You know, you can blue it down and make it look like a night sky. But I tend to try and find, I'm just going to try auto first and see what happens try and find a more neutral color to start with okay and then I'm going to work my way through um, the Milky Way and try and bring out those colors as we go with contrast you can see there's some slight greens and magentas and that there already and then we might go back and, and change our tint or our white balance slightly so I'm just going to start with auto now I'm going to add a touch a bit of contrast as well because what I'm concentrating on at the moment I'm just purely looking at the Milky Way here in the galactic center, this bit here, because that's the bit that's really going to make our image pop, okay? So, and one thing you can do, um, you can see, is I hit the whites here, because that is the, really the brightest part of the image. You know, the whites are super cool. So if you turn on your clipping up here, and then just move your whites back and forth. You don't want it to clip, okay? That's important. We don't want it to clip there, but we are going to brighten up that area, okay? We're going to brighten it up a bit like that. So there's a tiny bit of clipping in some of these, but that's okay. I'm not too worried about those right now. So if we have a look at the before, after, before, after, that's where we're at so far. And I'm beginning to like where that's at. Um, with the blacks, it's, it's totally up to you. You know, if we push those blacks down, it's going to, you know, obviously silhouette this area a lot more. 
And I feel like it's probably okay where it is. In fact, we could probably pull the blacks back the other way. And we'll see a touch more detail into this area, but, but nothing too much. So there's before, after, before, after. All right, so that's looking pretty good. I'm liking where that's at. Now, this is where we can really start to target the, some areas with the tone curve. Um, I'm gonna hit the tone curve now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna push up on this brighter area there. And I'm gonna find a slightly darker area. Maybe not that one. Let's have a look here maybe. Okay, I'm just making slight adjustments. You can see that's just with that slight adjustment there of the tone curve and it's given me a slight little S, but when you use the target adjustment, you can target certain luminances um, across your image. And I'm just working on the Milky Way. That's all I'm interested at the moment. Just bringing out that Milky Way and that lovely galactic center there. So that's starting to look pretty good. Now I am gonna add a bit of vignette. As you guys know, I love my vignettes. I'll add a vignette to just about anything. <laughs> I'll feather that out there. It's just to bring the edges down a touch more. That's all we're looking at doing. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Now, I think I'm happy with the color. I'm happy with uh, the galactic center and the Milky Way. That's all starting to look quite nice there. And we can play around with the other tones a bit later, okay? But we're just looking for something quite natural right now, all right? If you want to push it a bit more magenta a bit more blue after the fact then you can but um, well, I'm not going to worry about that just yet so obviously down here in lens correction go to profile I'm just going to enable chromatic aberration always like to tick that on just to get rid of any chromatic aberrations there now I'm going to zoom in a bit and you'll start to see these areas that in the background not so much the grain okay we're not looking at the texture but you can see these noisy sections here that's actually um, uh, color noise so we move this right to 100% and put the smoothness on 100%, I, I tend to find that that's a good starting place. I don't know if you can see there, but it's smoothed out sort of the background behind these images. You can see there's before, there's after, before, after, and it's got rid of um, some of that, some of that yuckiness back there. Um, I, I, lo I like it looking better like that. It's taken a bit of the color out of it, so I might just pull it back just a touch. I always like to start, you know, with extreme, then we bounce around a little bit and let's see, pull that smoothness back a little bit there. All right, now let's look and see if we can take care of some of that noise. So I'm gonna bump the noise reduction. Usually between 30 and 50 is what you need to do uh, for your noise. So let's see, somewhere around there. I always like to zoom out, have a little bit of a look there. Yeah, that's looking nice, let's have a look. Obviously, what, what's happening with the, the noise reduction, it's smoothing everything out. So you can play around with this detail slider and you can, Lightroom will try and recover some of that detail back. So um, that's always a good idea, especially with these high um, noisy images, to try and just, just have a bounce around, see what you prefer. There's no like, this is the, the right setting because every situation is different. Now let's play around with the contrast and see what happens there. You can see often with these images, I will bump it up to the extreme and bring it back. All right, so let's have a look here now. So we turn that off and on. Oh yeah, that's looking cool. I'm liking where we're headed now. The noise down in here is pretty good. That's pretty good. All right, so let's do our sharpening. And we're, you know, we're gonna do our normal amount of sharpening, but what's super important with this type of image um, is to make sure we use our masking. So if I hold down the option key, drag the masking out. I'm gonna drag it out really intense because we just wanna sharpen the edges. That's all we're really after. So everything that's turning white there is actually, uh, that's the wrong slider, Johnny. Everything that's turning white there is actually being affected by the sharpening and everything that's black isn't. So somewhere there, that looks pretty good. So we do before, after, before, after. Yeah, that's looking really cool. All right, I'm looking, well, liking where we're headed here. This is looking good. Let's make sure we're still recording, and we are. All right, last but not least, let's start with a few local adjustments. And you know what, I just love, actually, there's a new texture slider, which I need to do a video about, and I haven't tried it on the Milky Way yet. So let's just see, let's see what this does. I love clarity, usually, and I just wanna paint the texture around this area, and just see. So let's paint a bit of texture there, let's create a new brush. This is a little bit of an experiment, and let's paint some clarity over here. So let's bump up the clarity there a bit. Let's just turn that off. 
turn on. Yeah, still a fan. I'm going to delete those. So it's still a fan. The, t the, the clarity, it just, it, I don't know. It, clarity does something when you've got these bright highlights like this. I just love it. It just brings out, you know. So yeah, you just want to get in there and paint a bit of clarity because it looks cool. So you can see as we start to crank it up there, that's looking really good. All right. So let's have a look. There's the before. There's the after, before, after. Right, so we're pretty much at a natural looking as a as sky as it would. So from here, if you know, you could add a little bit more magenta tint, a subtle hint of magenta, or we could go the other way and add a bit more subtle blue. It's totally up to you. Or you could leave it natural the way I tend to like it, okay? So that's the before, that's the after, before, after. And I think that looks really good. If I press the Y key now, let's have a look. So there's our before and after side by side. It's a lovely capture cape. I think, I think just, um, I don't think it needs a crop. I don't think there's anything needs to be taken out of it. I just uh, think, you know, uh, playing with that white balance and then making that the creative decision. If you do want to make it more, uh, more, um, well, it's the other thing you could do. Actually, I was just looking at it. the other thing you do too is add a little bit more contrast in there because I feel like we could even go a touch darker because it is a night sky. So if you, the other thing I was going to say, Kate, you, if you wanted to make that creative decision with your white balance, um, then you, you totally could. You know, add a bit more blue or add a bit more magenta. It's totally up to you. But I try to like like to see a little bit more natural like this. That's that's my preference. Um, we could play around. Actually, something we didn't do is we could just play around with a bit of saturation and a bit of vibrance as well because it's going to naturally bring those colors out you notice a lot of my photos i'll get the contrast right and then i won't even have to touch saturation and vibrance so but with these photos um it's it's often good you can get a little bit more out of them you know if you do and you can see what it's done rather than this one the scene has been magenta all over it's actually brought out you know there's some uh, oranges there there's some greens and magentas there's heaps of different colors through that galactic center so that's something that the uh, saturation and that has definitely brought out there um let's go i'll move the wrong slide as johnny i think i need more coffee today but anyway so there you go there's the before there's the after you can see we've even got some orange hues down low that might have been some uh, light pollution coming from somewhere not sure but um yeah lovely image k well done i hope that's helped you there's the before there's the after, there's the side by side. Awesome, love it. All right guys, if you wanna know any more about the Team 3CX photography community, the Kay and many other members are learning landscape and nature photography. There will be a link below this video. And as always, thanks for joining in. And uh, sorry if I was a bit wishy-washy today. I haven't been on the microphone for a little while and uh, I think I've only had one coffee and I think that's the problem. But anyway, it was all good. Thanks for stopping by and uh, we'll talk to you again really soon. All right, I'm out, peace.